Frequency transformations can be developed for either discrete time or continuous time systems. In this lecture, we're going to look at frequency transformations for continuous time systems. Frequency transformations are used to convert a prototype filter, usually low pass, to a desired band pass or high pass or band stop and so on filter. Now, the way these transformations work is that they involve replacing S in the prototype low pass filter transfer function with some function of a new variable S tilde. We do that as shown here. We take H of S tilde is H low pass of S with S replaced by F of S tilde. This corresponds to warping the frequency axis using the function omega is some f of omega tilde. So we're converting from one frequency axis to another and we choose that warping so that we obtain the desired transformation of the low pass frequency response. We are going to look at here low pass to low pass which amounts to changing the cutoff frequency, low pass to high pass, and then finally low pass to band pass transformations. So low pass to low pass transformation takes the form S is S tilde divided by omega C. We can obtain frequency response by replacing S with J omega. We see that this transformation relates the frequency axes according to the omega equals omega tilde divided by omega C. So our filter transfer function after we've done the transformation H of S tilde is just HLP, our prototype filter, evaluated at S tilde divided by omega C. We can get a better idea of how this works by graphically looking at the frequency transformation and the original and the transform filter. So what I've shown here is a function omega of omega tilde. So this is our frequency transformation, omega equals omega tilde divided by omega C, and that's a line going through the origin with slope 1 over omega C. So we'll have our low pass filter prototype along the omega axis, so I'm going to draw that vertically. And then our omega tilde axis is horizontal, so we'll draw our transform filter on the horizontal axis omega tilde. And if I take some frequency omega naught, that corresponds to a specific value in the prototype filter. I'm going to map that value through our frequency transformation and I see that that same value is now going to show up on the omega tilde axis at omega c times omega zero. And we can do this with all such values. Here in the pass band, I'm going to continue to map to low frequencies and then the stop band would map out here to higher frequencies. So what we've done with this transformation is we've stretched the omega axis by this factor omega c. If we had a critical frequency, the passband edge was omega naught, by using this frequency transformation we can convert the passband edge to a frequency omega c times omega naught. Now to do a low pass to high pass transformation, we actually have to invert the frequency axis. In other words, make what are the low frequencies in the prototype become high frequencies in our filter. And we can do that using a frequency transformation S equals omega C divided by S tilde. Converting that, we find this inverse relationship omega equals negative omega C divided by omega tilde. And the negative sign comes in here because of the way the j's cancel out. Here I have j omega in the numerator. Here I have j omega tilde in the denominator. When those cancel, I end up with negative omega c in the numerator. Our transform filter has transfer function h of s tilde, which is h low pass of omega c divided by s tilde. So to understand how this low pass to high pass frequency transformation works, we're going to graph the function of frequency that it represents. So here I'm showing omega is negative omega c over omega tilde. As omega tilde goes to zero from the negative side, this is going to blow up towards positive infinity. And then of course, as omega c goes towards zero from the positive side, this goes toward negative infinity. And then as omega tilde gets big in the positive direction, omega approaches zero from the negative side. 
And on the other hand, as omega tilde gets big in the negative direction, omega approaches zero on the positive side. So we take our low pass filter prototype and we're going to sketch that along the omega axis, as I've done here on the left. And then we're going to see how does this map to the function on the omega tilde axis. So what we're going to do is take each point here on this low pass filter and we're going to map it through this transformation to find out where it goes on the omega tilde axis. So let's start at this point here, negative omega naught, which is somewhere in the transition band from pass band to stop band. If I take that value of omega, I see that it was generated by a value of omega tilde given by omega c divided by omega naught. And so this point on our low pass filter will map into our transformed filter at a similar point. And then going to the positive frequency omega naught, that's going to map through this transformation to an omega tilde, which is equal to negative omega c over omega naught. And so we have the transition band shows up here. And then if we look at, say, frequencies above the transition band, well, that's going to map to values of omega tilde that lie in this interval close to zero. So this is going to be our upper stop band, and the low pass filter is going to show up down here at low frequencies. If we look at the pass band in the low pass filter, this region here is going to map through our frequency transformation down to the entire for omega tilde to minus infinity. So the pass band of our low pass filter is going to map to this other region over here. And we can do the same thing for the negative frequency values of the low pass filter the negative frequency stop band is going to map through this transformation to the small positive frequencies in omega tilde and the negative frequency pass band is going to map through this transformation to the range of large positive frequencies for omega tilde. And if I then sketch what my h of omega tilde looks like, I see that indeed I have a high pass filter. And what this transformation has done is it's inverted the frequency axis. So for our third case, we're going to look at a transformation that maps low pass filters to band pass filters. And this transformation is given by s is equal to s tilde squared plus omega c squared divided by b times s tilde. And if we convert that to be a function of frequency, capital omega, we obtain omega is equal to omega tilde squared minus omega c squared divided by b omega tilde. And the change of sign here on the omega c squared is a consequence of the way that the j's cancel out. So we obtain our bandpass filter from our low pass filter by replacing s with s tilde squared plus omega c divided by b s tilde. And since our low pass filter is a ratio of polynomials in s, this kind of a transformation will preserve that basic form. In other words, h of s tilde will still be a ratio of polynomials now in s tilde. We're going to draw our frequency transformation omega as a function of omega tilde in the magenta line we see that for graphing purposes, this goes through zero when omega tilde is equal to omega c, because then the numerator is exactly zero. When omega tilde is very small, then this behaves as negative omega c squared over b omega tilde. It's going to be uh, have a 1 over x type behavior, so it's coming from negative infinity, as omega tilde goes to zero, and as, as omega tilde gets large, omega tilde is going to dominate omega c squared, and I can cancel out the omega tilde in the denominator, so this is going to behave as omega tilde over b, so it starts to look linear. So if we take our prototype low pass filter, now we're showing both negative and positive frequencies omega because of the shape of our transformation and we map it through this transformation, what we see is that the zero frequency in the prototype filter maps to omega c in our transform filter. So this is our frequency that corresponded to zero. 
And then if we take a negative frequency, let's suppose that it's at minus omega naught, and that's going to map through this transformation to some frequency omega tilde 1, and you can solve for omega tilde 1 by substituting negative omega 0 in here and rooting the resulting polynomial to find omega tilde, and you get this expression that is written out here. We can do the same thing with another frequency at positive omega naught, and that'll give us some frequency omega 2 tilde, which I've also expressed here. And of course, if we're in the stop band, the negative stop band maps to low frequencies in omega tilde, because that's negative frequencies for omega map to small positive frequencies for omega tilde. And similarly, a large positive frequency for omega maps to a large positive frequency for omega tilde. So we've used this transformation and it's taken our low pass filter shape and centered it at omega c and then possibly stretched it. If we look at the distance between omega 2 tilde and omega 1 tilde, we see that this distance is just omega naught times b. So if we had a distance here across this, which would be 2 omega naught, then our distance across the same width in the transform filter is going to be b times omega naught. So b scales the width or the passband width of the filter. So we get the center frequency at omega c and then by adjusting b we can adjust the bandwidth of this bandpass filter. So let's you do an example where we take a very simple first order low pass Butterworth filter. This is transfer function 1 over s plus 1 and we'll convert that to a bandpass filter and we'll choose the pass band so that it extends from 10 to 14 radians per second. We're going to define the pass band as the width between the half power points of the filter. So here's our low pass filter. We see that the half power point is at 1 radian per second. If I put in j omega here and use omega equals 1, I get that the uh, magnitude is 1 over the square root of 2. Now our desired half power bandwidth is 4 radians per second. Here we have omega naught equals 1, and we want to have a width of 4 radians per second. So to get that, we're going to have to multiply omega naught by b equals 4. Then our center frequency is midway between 10 and 14, which would be at 12 radians per second. So we're going to choose omega c and our low pass to band pass transformation to be 12. Since our low pass to band pass transformation takes the form s equals s tilde squared plus omega c squared divided by b s tilde, we see that our transformation becomes s tilde squared plus 144 which is omega c squared, divided by 4 s tilde, because b is 4. So we'll take our low pass filter, 1 over s plus 1, and replace s by s tilde squared plus 144, divided by 4 s tilde, and this gives us a transfer function for our bandpass filter of 4 s tilde, divided by s tilde squared plus 4 s tilde plus 144. You can see that one thing that's happened is we now have a second order filter. We started off with a first order filter. The highest polynomial denominator was order one. Now we have a second order filter. And that's characteristic of a low pass to band pass transformation is it doubles the order of the filter. The other thing that's happened is we can see we've introduced a zero at s tilde equals zero. As a bandpass filter, we're going to have zero response at DC. And if we use this transfer function and evaluate the frequency response, which I did using MATLAB, we see that we get the following characteristic. We indeed have a zero at omega equals zero. And then our center frequency is at 12. And our values for the gain at 10 and at 14 end up being 1 over the square root of 2. Those are the half power points, so our half power bandwidth ends up being 4 radians per second. Now frequency transformations 
are very useful because they allow us to take a prototype or standardized low pass filter and convert it to desired form. The same sort of strategy applies in discrete time, although the nature of the transformations is slightly different. One could take a prototype discrete time filter and transform it to an arbitrary passband type filter. These techniques are used when we're designing infinite impulse response filters.